back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be looking at interaction again. The reason is we have lots of different avenues of interaction and we're going to be covering off a few of those uh, on the lead up to uh, weapons, the weapon system. It is coming. I know a lot of people have been asking when's weapons come. It's coming. I promise you it's coming. Um, but we've got lots of different avenues of interaction. Uh, th today we're going to be looking at opening doors, but you know there's obviously like talking to NPCs. There's interacting with the world. There's uh, picking and up and dropping items and, and all sorts of things. Uh, and we're going to be kind of slowly ticking them all off while we kind of head towards weapon system. Uh, I'm going to be covering doors today. I'm going to do dialogue tomorrow, maybe, or the next day, whenever I, I can do a video. Um, and then we're going to do uh, picking up items. And then we're going to do uh, cover like our inventory and how we're going to equip weapons. And then we can get into all the good stuff. So... Uh, I created this door on Blender. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It took me all of five minutes to make. Uh, it's nothing special. It's supposed to kind of look like one of those um, uh, kind of old medieval great doors, you know, that, that kind of like lift up um, with the spikes at the bottom. It, it's not great. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to make this because it literally is like five boxes and like ten cylinders. And I just kind of jammed it all together and, and it, it it's here. The material is literally just the metal rust material that comes in with UE, UE5. It is not optimized. It looks terrible. I know this. It actually looks more like wooden planks. But whatever. We won't We won't question that. <coughs> so we need to get this thing moving. Now, I've dragged this straight into um, the... Uh, engine straight away. I've made an assets folder. It's here. Iron Grey. I've even got a sound I found on the internet. Um, so we can get it sounding like it's actually opening. It's This is going to be a very similar tutorial to the one I did uh, for UE5. Uh, the UE FPS tutorial we did, you know, uh, nearly a year ago. Uh, I'm not going as in-depth as that, so I will link that one in the description below. Um, this one will just be covering the opening and closing because we're doing it in a different way with a different interaction system. So we don't need the kind of collision parts. We don't need to know a lot of things. Um, so let's get stuck in, shall we? There's nothing we really need to do on the component side of things because, again, we don't need the collision boxes or anything. So we can go straight into the event graph. We don't need the event begin plays or any of that stuff. The one thing we do need to do is go into the class settings and add in the interface on the right hand side here. Uh, so if I find that interact BPI, there it is. Um, we can double tap to get that uh, interface interact. There we go. And all we need to do, I say all we need to do, there's quite a bit we need to do, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll get there one at a time. Oh. Okay, so if you did watch the original FPS series, you'll know we did the kind of unlock and lock kind of color panel. We're not going to be doing any of that because it's not a sci-fi game, and it's we're, we're just doing a medieval kind of lifting up and down kind of door mechanic. So, and we also don't need to do the, as I just mentioned, we don't need to do the overlap component. So we just need to kind of worry about the actual mechanic itself. Um, for this, we're going to need three Boolean variables. The first one is door unlocked. Um, we also need door closed. And we need is opening. The door unlocked needs to be um, instance editable and exposed on spawn. Uh that so that's that's all good um now we just need to do the actual code so we're going to start off with holding down b and getting a branch and we're going to plug the door unlocked now this is so you can choose whether you can actually open the door up in game uh at all and if you can't you can literally lock it in the editor so if i go back out here and i click on this now um we should have is door unlocked if it's true, we can unlock it. If it's false, we can't. Uh, I think we should do that the other way around to save us having to tick every single door. Uh, so let's do door locked instead. 
and we can untick that one now. So if we didn't want the door open, we can we can just tick it if we didn't want it to open. So is the door locked? True, we would then play a sound, play sound, 2D sound, um, and then we would do nothing else. If uh, we do want it unlocked, we will play a sound, uh, well, I used to play a sound for the sci-fi haven project because it makes sense to have like a sci-fi sound to say doo doo like it's it's unlocked and then you'd have the unlock sound where the doors would open. So you could do that or leave it with this type of door. I mean, you could have like a chain sound that's like sounds like the chains are being pulled. I don't know. That's up for your cre up to your creativity and what you would want to do with that. Now we need another branch. And that new branch is going to be, is it opening? If it is opening, we will set that. To tr uh, if it's, if it is opening, it's true. We want, we don't want to do anything. Um, I'm going to put a delay in here as well, just a half a second, because I was found as well. If you, if you didn't have the delay, it wouldn't uh, action this part and it just would mess it up a little bit. So is it opening? If it's true, we don't want to do anything because the door's already creating its action and we don't really want to uh, mess around with that too much. So we set is opening to true off the false with a delay of 5.2 second if it's not opening. That way we can actually open the door. Then we need to determine one last final thing. Is the door closed? So are we opening said door or not? And this is where we're going to take these two play sounds and put them over here because we're going to want to play the door opening sound. You could have a different sound for opening. You could have a different sound for closing. Uh, the sci-fi one it works better with two different sounds. But for the sake of this, I'm going to have the same sound. If I can, if I could drag it in. There we go. There we go. So we're going to play the same sound. And... Then, depending on what we're doing, we're going to set the door is closed to something. So if the door is closed, we want to open it. So we set door closed to false. And then we set door closed to true. It also means that we need to have the default of door closed set to true. So don't forget to go click on door closed here and set it to true. Um... So just to quickly, before we go into the timeline side of things, just to just to, to clarify, door is locked. If, it, if Is the door locked? So have we locked it in the world so we can't open it at all? If it's true, we just play the lock sound. If it's false, we play it is unlocked sound or nothing. Then we check to see if the door is opening already. So have we already pressed E previously to this, this E interaction? If we have, it, we do nothing. If we haven't, we can actually open the door. We can actually run the code. We run a delay of 0 0.5 seconds, purely just to um, give it a chance to set the door, uh, to make sure we, we're not spamming and doing all that sort of stuff. In all honesty, this might not be necessary, but we'll see. We can always test it. Uh, we set is door opening to true so that we can't repress E. Um, we do a branch check on door closed so that we can see if it's open or closed already. If it is closed, we open it. If it's uh, open, we close it. Now we can right click and get a timeline. And we'll call this a door opening. Now I've already worked out what needs to go where for me with this but if you double tap it and open it up and click on the track at the top left here and add a float track we need to set this to the uh, i'm going to set this for me you can have your set to whatever you want but i'm going to set mine to the sound uh, the length of my time which is 3.3 .3. so we can set this to 3.3 .3. We can right click to add a key float. Now the first one needs to go at zero time and zero value. And we then need to determine what we want to add to our current location. So to figure that out, click on this. Now I'm moving mine in the Z axis, which is up. 
and mine should be sitting at 45. And I want mine to finish in this position here, which I worked out to be around about 290. So what you do is you take 290 and you take off the 45 that you need. So that would make it uh, 245. Uh, don't do this to the zero one. Add another new pin. Oh, down it. Zero. Add a new pin. Set the time to whatever time you need it to be on this length. And then add in the extra value you need added onto it. So mine would be 245. It might be that I need to add it to actually say 290. I think I'm, I think it might need to go to 290. Thinking about it like that, actually. We'll test it. We'll see what happens. We compile this anyway. Name the track so you can keep an eye on it. So this one is door uh, up and compile. <clears throat> and then we can um, go back into the event graph and we have this new door up value. This is what we're going to make our vector with. So pull off from this and go make vector. Change it from the X value to the Z value. Now I'll talk about X and Y in a moment. It's where it gets a bit annoying, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. Compile. Grab the static mesh component from the top left here, drag it out, and set its relative location. And plug the vector into the new location. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is we're going to do a delay. of uh, the time in which we want the door opening. So 3.5, just to cover the sound and the door opening. And then we set is opening back to false. That's it kind of full circle. That's kind of what we're trying to attempt to do here. There's one thing we need to still tackle and that's the X and Y value you see. So if I press play and I open it now, what will happen is this door will disappear because it will take these x and y coordinates so what we need to do now this is where these doors kind of get a bit uh fiddly because you'd have to create a different door depending on what you're trying to change about that door so if you had a door that opens up upwards like the one we're making now or if you have one that goes um left or right slides left and slides right they would have to be different BPs. They can't all be the same BP, even if they're using the same model. Because we need to determine where their X and Y values are or their Z values are. And this can only go into whatever you're trying to amend. So what I like to do with these is I like to promote these to, vari to uh, variables called X and Y. You can leave them as X and Y because this is a Z door. And it just makes it a bit easier if we take that X value and we uh, instance editable it and expose it on stream, just like the uh, the door locked value. So do that with the Y as well. Um, and then what we can do is if we go back to the editor, we can now determine uh, we can now determine what whether it's locked or not. Now, this type of door we know is always going to open up to a certain amount, right? So it's always going to be, hopefully, at uh, 40. I don't know, but hopefully it will be. What we need to do, though, is take its uh, X location and put it into here. Same for its Y value. Now, this doing it this way just saves you going into here and amending these values every time. And it also means that now we can have, if we had like a corridor with multiple doors down it, all at the same Z value, so all at Z45, all at Z45 going to 290. If we had that for all of these doors in a corridor, so you had like 10 doors down this corridor. It just means that we can move the X and Y position and amend these in the editor instead of having to create a blueprint for every single um one of these doors so it is it is very useful in that sense but a lot of the time you'll find that you will have to make new doors because not every door is going to sit at z45 so you might have to make another one and another one but you could make child bps of that and do it that way if that uh just to save you making a new bp every time 
So let's give it a test and see how it's working. Let's go in. And let's click on it. There we go. It goes up. And we can go under. Working perfectly. I tested this earlier, obviously, and there is one glaring issue that I did notice with our crouch and prone. Uh, and that is the capsule height. Now, you won't, I won't be able to show you it in this. But basically, what's happening is, is our capsule height is staying at 109 compared to the uh, where it should be like a half height. I will show you how to amend this in a couple, upcoming video. But for now, this is doors. Hopefully, this has been uh, useful for you guys. Um, and it comes down and it goes a bit too low. Looking at that, actually, um, on the reverse. Oh, that's because it's going to, to zero. Ah, okay, so what we could do with that one, then, is just to change this, change this value to 45, its starting position. And that should fix that issue. Because as you notice, it, all, it, it went to 290 where we wanted it. So let's just try that again. It goes up and let's just see if it stops at 45 like it should perfect there we go so that's working uh that's how you kind of do doors you can obviously change that z value to an x or y one so if you wanted your door to go left or right um and that's up to you guys but experiment with this and, and hopefully this helps you out a lot to um to work out you know how to do your doors and stuff uh, I'm just going to do one last thing, actually, before I go. I'm just going to make sure that door lock does work. So if I click door locked, let's just make sure that it does work. Now, obviously, it's not going to play a sound. Uh, it just won't do anything. Oh, lag. My, my potato PC is, is not happening. Oh, God. Yeah, it's hitting, but it's not actually doing anything. So that's good. So it shows you that it's locked. Now, again, you could just play a sound with that. Oh, God, the lag. Hopefully, you found this useful, though. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for the support that you've been showing my channel. Uh, it's doing amazing, better than I ever thought it would. So I really appreciate every single one of you. Uh, if you haven't already joined the Discord, there's loads of people in there that's like-minded like us, uh, all trying to make video games and stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.